Alright, we've got some sad news on Honey Hill Farm. You want to tell them what our sad news is, Rachel? The sad news is our trees are all blossomed out, all our peach trees, both our peach trees and our pear tree, and we're expecting um, some twenty below freezing temps. Yeah, some 20, 20 degree weather coming up tomorrow night. So we can come over here and look. We can come over here and look at these guys. And they really are just beautiful, beautiful little flowers. And as uh, y'all may know where those flowers are, that's what's important. That's where the fruit is going to be. Our hope is, is that the bees over there have already had their opportunity to pollinate. And if so, then maybe we have a chance. See, some of the petals are already falling off, so, so we that see. may be. So if the petals, uh, which one here right am I looking at? Right here. Yeah. Oh, right here. Yeah, that one. The petals already falling off. We're hoping that the flowers, because we've had a really warm week this week, that we've had enough of a chance for the bees to work and to pollinate our trees so we've got the opportunity for uh, some fertile fruit uh, just like anything else um, that's uh, it's got such beauty and, and that's where the pollen is it's pollinated and and then it's, it's just, it then the <laughs> yeah then it makes fruit. the fruits just uh, so pollination that's a good topic maybe this is a good way for parents to you can have that conversation with your children but uh so this is another reason why we like to farm is because we we get that opportunity now i'm going to tell you maybe some of you guys have some good ideas but we've tried to canvas these put burlap over them we've tried to spray them with water the way that they say they do down south and we have just not had luck but we have a plan and if we're going to lose our our flowers anyway they're going to freeze and we can even wait until after the frost so long as we don't lose the petals but um, we do have wind if the wind stays we won't get the frost but the cold temperatures will still kill the bud even though there's not a frost so we have to really watch that but we can take those flowers harvest them if we're going to lose them anyway and make some peach blossom jelly or in that case some pear blossom jelly lots of blossoms so we still have the opportunity to be productive with these trees um, so we're waiting that wind so sometimes the wind can actually be a blessing it's we had strong winds this past week uh, it can cause damage but it can also preserve things too so uh, a lot of that is that wisdom that Rachel gives but so something to keep in mind we're already over here we want to get a good close look at some of these bees and it is windy it's cold there is not a lot of action they're gonna stay in when it's windy and cold too but what you all need to know is that we are in the season as it warms up as the dandelions sprout up here's something we get a lot of right here we get some purple nettle okay bees love this so we don't mow very quick a lot of people's running their mowers and we think they're crazy because this is this is good food and what why is the purple nettle so good rachel the bees eat it that's what i said but why well, did you it's say a, it's a bitter it they use the bitters when they come up in the spring a but lot wait. of timers would 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 eat the bitters and that is but if like it's, a blood purifying um so even though it's bitter it's not bad for you no it's great for you why? Especially in the beginning of the, the springtime when, you know, you've been cooped up all winter long and you come out and um, this is one of the first things that grows out of the ground. Um, I just know that it can be used as a, as a cleansing, as a body cleansing um, 
you know, tool. Right. I want y'all to get a good look at this. So right here. That's it right there. Purple nettle, beautiful little flowers, bees eat it. There's also a, a lookalike called henbit. Henbit. Yeah. And, and henbit is uh, very similar, right? Very similar. It can be eaten the same. Yeah. So this is bitter. If... Um, it, but it's it's also very good. It's good to uh, lower triglycerides. So if you're one who struggles with triglycerides or or something like that, uh, this is this is wonderful. It's bitter and it is much better put with a sweet leaf lettuce if you're going to eat it in your salad. Or even, but you uh, know, do you want to eat that? It's good. It is not. It is not as pleasant. But look, if you don't believe me. But it's good to mix like with dandelion too. Dandelion. It's is bitter. One of those. Um, you'll you'll pucker. But listen, time. us Americans need to eat more bitters. Wouldn't you agree, Rachel? Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. So, wonderful food. That's bitter, but it's good for me. Rachel said so. <laughs> so, we are going to head that way. And by the way, we're seeing early. Uh, you need to follow because Rachel gets into these posts with the various plants and things. And maybe we'll do some more of this stuff so that you can see. Uh, the blessing it's around guys the dandelions well, don't don't kill your dandelions well, either springtime is a great time especially it's a it's a great time to go ahead and start your um like your your herbal journals where you know you can go out and draw your picture write down the actions of all the plants what they're used for and so you know you can start early with the dandelions the purple nettle um plantain um purple violet is another one that is a is one that comes up early in the spring and so as as it warms up you can add to your journal slowly um and i'm always an encourager for you to find out what's growing around um on around what's growing around you um yes and what you can utilize locally also so. yeah so good stuff man there so is did a, you tell them like the swarming what to look for and everything i didn't else? i started to so with the bees if we go back and look at these guys, something you need to understand about the bees, we're pretty close. Nobody's moving a whole lot, but they're getting more food sources. The purple nettles one, dandelions are great. Our beautiful trees that we're going to end up having to harvest flowers. I'm not sure if we'll have the fruit, um, but... Um, as it warms and they get more food sources so we say don't don't cut your dandelions down and your purple nettle leave it out there and uh, give the bees a chance to eat from all those pretty little little things violets and such and um, but whenever that food supply becomes adequate they are going to want to do their their spring cleaning and begin so quickly their food storage. We've uh, done some videos where we're, we're planting, getting our seeds ready, uh, potting things, and, and, and preparing our garden. Well, they begin early to start storing. So uh, this is the way this works, is bees work all through the year in order to store food for winter. Well, it's not winter anymore, so their food supply is likely down. So what you will see, if I can orchestrate my finger, is I leave two boxes that, that's for them. That they fill with honey, and, and then that's theirs. I, I never take that. Now that top box, now that's actually the top inner cover. That top box is really just a shield for what I have hidden inside there. So if you'll bear with me, I keep something weighted, and I'm going to crack the lid. See, down in here, I've got my bucket feeder, and uh, so no bees in there. That's just an empty portion of box I leave protected, and I've fed them a little bit already just to jump start them. Their stores are low, so we get them ready, and as the queen lays, what she will do is the old queen... They'll, they'll rear a new queen, a young one that they'll hatch out, and from, from egg they will feed uh, royal jelly, a very special opaque honey that is nutrient-rich with the very first fruits of all these flowers we're talking about. And listen, this too, this is, a, this is an argument for those uh, people that like to talk about abortion. Bees rear their queen, and from its egg stage... They nourish it with this royal jelly. So they realize that those early stages of life are still altogether important. 
and they nurture this queen and she hatches she's bigger than the rest and and uh and she is fertile and she does her fly about with uh, a drone and um comes back and will lay eggs for the duration of her life that are fertile and and hatch out uh baby little baby bees or they raise the eggs the larva so the old queen, after rearing this new one, will take half of the workers and she'll leave the inheritance to the new queen and the half of the colony uh, to work. She'll leave her full store. So they swarm. Now what they'll likely do, guys, and if you're getting into bees, this is important. Uh, because if you have some big pine trees, I'm going to spin around. Look at these big pines. Nice big white pines. Now they're nice when the bees go... Down here, not so nice when the bees go up here because we can't reach them. But they always go to evergreens if they're available. So I've literally, uh, at different times, I'd had some jade uh, bushes planted directly behind my hives. 90% of my swarms would go right to them. I could put them in a box and give them their new home. But what you might see, and this is important because if you're close to us, call us or call someone else. And let us know because they'll find see this is all full of pollen and stuff too but I think the sap draws them just as much and they will clump up the size of a of a volleyball or, or something you'll see a big old ball of bees and whenever you see that they're not stinging or anything they've actually just gorged themselves on honey for the long journey that they're going to um, you know embark on and so they're just they're just there temporarily until some of the workers go out <clears throat> and find them a, another suitable home up in a tree or or something else but that's the time that a beekeeper will will try to collect those bees and give them a new home so do you got anything to add to that no nope so if you're new to bees you can get you some small small trees uh, see these big old suckers they can be problematic once they're in the top well, they're they're gone they they go where they want to and they're on their own but but for us this is where we you know we have those sometimes we'll find them over here on these peach trees um so they they do like that where there's where there's uh buds and stuff but other than that look so give us a call and if not call someone else you know because we like to just well, help, and normally help if them, you along. Leave them alone long enough they're gonna move they're gonna go so. away so either way they will not bother you they will not they're so docile i've done videos in the past and may do another one in the future where you can just reach your hand up in, inside they they don't sting you uh they could they could and i guess sometimes they do but more times than not they're they're very docile it's like after having eaten a a big turkey dinner or something where they're not not very dangerous at that point they are they are ready to just get to their resting place <laughs> so, so this april and may are the the main two months where swarming right. takes place and it's yeah. actually really cool because it's another form of reproduction you know, right you often don't hear that. Sometimes beekeepers don't like them to swarm. They split their hives. We've tried that. But the thing is, that's what a healthy hive does, mm -hmm. is they reproduce and they, they make more. Out. They send out, right? Oh, whoa. <laughs> Rachel just picked up on something. What are you saying here? A healthy church sends out. reproduces. A healthy church sends out. Uh, how do you know that you're an effective... Uh, discipler whenever your disciples make disciples right so we want our we you got to raise your children in such a way that uh, we tell ours I'm not raising you so you will do something like this I'm raising you so that you can raise your children in such the way that they will be able to raise their children in order to glorify God have you ever thought of that it's pretty pretty good stuff but look it is a little windy a little crispy uh, cold out so it is not a uh, yeah, crisp air. I don't know. Maybe I made it up. But the thing is, is man, it's it is a good sunny day. Those bees are getting ready, talking about it right now, and waiting on the warm weather, just like we are. And uh, so, just be ready because coming into early April, all the way through the end of May, uh, they'll be swarming. They can swarm later than that in the year, but keep your eyes out. Keep your eyes out and watch. Uh, next time you begin to see something like that, why don't you take the opportunity to pay a little bit of special attention. And uh, so anyway, we're going to wrap that up and uh, just giving you, inside, uh, giving you a little bit of the inside approach on 
things, the way we're thinking through preparing and, and trying not to let things go to waste. So um, hopefully you guys have benefited and uh, we'd love to hear some of your stories and uh, what it is that you guys do or what you're thinking about, how you're preparing, because we're always in a state of preparing, aren't we? Always preparing. So remember that. Uh, and we will talk to you all again soon.